I sure can. Hey, Ed, before anybody gets on, I'm going to go and get QuickBooks, but my accountant said don't get the online version. Get the, like, you download it to your desktop, right? So, and, and the simplest one, correct? Because it's basically just me. I'm using it to track my expenses and, and my revenue. Is that yeah, it's, uh, I'm a big fan of not using the online version. Yeah, he for, said don't get it. <laughs> for many re for many reasons, like, and it's not it's it's not just a security thing. There's a bunch of reasons why, and it's funny that uh, Intuit keeps wanting to push everybody into the online version. Like, if well, you have a, they keep you going, right? It's a subscription. Yeah, it's all, well, and it's not just that. Like, if you have a Mac, uh, I mean, it's it, it's literally hard to find where to get the on where to get the download version. But recently, I guess they got so much pushback that they kind of made it a little, but there was a while there that you had to like really dig to find it. It was, it was he like- He said that too. He hated the Mac. And I said, well, I have a Mac, but Margie's got it on her Mac. And she said, it's fine. It's, it's totally fine. It actually works really well. I, I love my Mac version. Oh, good. Okay. Between us, I mean, while we're on the subject, that yeah. I freaking hate Intuit as a company, the company behind TurboTax. Mm -hmm. And they, oh. <laughs> they, they they're, they're just like a- they're not. They're not. A, they're not a very nice company. The way they. The way they do things. And they. They. Uh, the way they were releasing stuff for Max for a long time was just. It was like a redheaded stepchild where they were just. Uh, anyways. Okay. I'm, glad, I'm glad we're recording this so that. So now okay. when any when anyone watches this video they'll they'll get to see this this really important stuff up front. Oh, you've been recording. Great. No, um, uh, <laughs> John. John's recording it. Um. Also, I downloaded the chart of accounts from KW, so it's kind of easy to upload into QuickBooks. Or... I don't know how to upload it into QuickBooks. I, oh. I never did that. I just, uh, I just, uh, just did it manually. I mean, it took took like twenty minutes. It's not, it's not very complicated to to set it up. But yeah, what I mean, it's just yeah. But remember, up. you're a tech guy. It's not, it's not that techy. I mean, it okay. like it's just repetitive, you know, and just, you just click in a bunch of stuff, but yeah, once you have it all set up, it's, it's really nice because everything just maps out automatically so that as long as you should enter stuff in correctly as you're spending it, then at the end of the month, the end of the quarter, you can see the, but, and by the way, that, that, I don't know if that we'll get into it in Ignite, but that's one of the most underutilized, you know, there's four models in the MREA book, the the lead generation model, the economic model, the budget model, and the organizational model. And this one, this, the budget model where you map out and see how you're spending is like the most underutilized thing. But in the end, it makes so much sense. Uh, you you yeah. start to realize like, oh, I'm at a point where I should hire an, Like you don't have to, you don't have to think like, oh, should I hire an assistant? I don't know. What am I going to, the budget tells you like, hey, it's time, time to hire an assistant stuff like that and tells you hey you're spending too much money on internet leads or whatever you know those business decisions become a lot easier when the model kind of dictates to you how you how you should, how you're spending money all right guys welcome welcome i see duran we got you on welcome eric we will uh get started here soon we still got like five minutes though Really like your lamp, sir. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. That's new. It only took me like nine months of COVID, but I finally got my my office kind of set up how I wanted it to. Well, it looks good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hey, Laura. Laura Anderson's on the line. We haven't had you on a name. <laughs> um, so, it's, actually, it's actually Bea. Oh, hey, Bea. Oh, well, Hi, Bea. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I have to change the name. There you are. Uh, that's, uh, easy to do. You just click on there and just uh, click the name. In, click the name and change it. Oh wow, that's easy. <laughs> but but welcome anyways. Good good to have you on. Yeah, thanks. And Bea got her license. She Woo! took the test and she passed. <laughs> She's one of us now. Yeah. Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Yes, when I joined the office, I was introduced to Mary Woodward, mm -hmm. and um, she said, "Welcome to the jungle." 
<laughs> Little did I know. <laughs> I would say the story about since we're recording and I won't do it because I wouldn't want to get back oh. to the person. Well, I'll say I just won't I use I won't use any names. So when I when I was new, uh, I remember sitting at a team meeting and, and I just happened to be sitting like next to one of the top producers in the office, right? This uh, this person who had many, many years and, and a whole lot of experience. And she's like, uh, she's like, how you like it so far? I'm like, oh yeah, it's really cool. And uh, you know, it's like, yeah, the uh, everyone's been really nice and I really appreciate that. And everything. she's like, yeah, all us real estate agents, we're all batshit crazy. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I have found my people. Yep. <laughs> she's like, oh yeah, we're we're crazy. We've been, we're we're, the, we're all the people that we couldn't we couldn't get employed anywhere else, and we start our own company. <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute. That's not true of everyone. Not, not everyone, not everyone. They're, they're, uh, many of them, though, I will say that. <laughs> I mean, after you worked for yourself for a while and been an entrepreneur, it's so hard to ever go back to like. Oh, I'll never go back. <laughs> Those days are over. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like you work any less hard. You know, what, what do they say about real estate? It's it, uh, you get to choose which 70 hours of the week you want to work. You know, the, the schedule is wonderful. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll keep the jokes going there while we're waiting for people to log in while we, we'll start promptly at All right, here's one for you. So the devil tells a real estate agent, look, I can make you richer, more famous, and more successful than any real estate agent alive in Los Angeles today. In fact, I can make you the greatest agent that ever lived in Los Angeles. Well, says the real estate agent, well, what do I have to do in return? The devil smiles. Well, of course, you have to give me your soul, he says, but you can also give me the souls of your children, the souls of your children's children. As a matter of fact, you have, you have to give me the souls of all your descendants throughout the eternity. I said, wait a minute, the real estate agent says cautiously. What's the catch? <laughs> da -dun -dun yeah, you can apply that to a lot of different professions. <laughs> yeah, as I was reading, I've, I've heard that attributed to, yeah. to many, many. Yes. I heard this uh, math question on TikTok this morning. It's been bothering me ever since. Um, they say, you and two friends go to a hotel and the hotel room is $30 and you guys decide to split it. So how much did each one of you pay? It's a simple question. So you each paid $10 a piece, right? $30 divided by three is $10. Sure. So the manager decides that she overpaid you and you should have paid $25. So she gives the bellboy $5 to take back to you. The bellboy is like, wait, $5 doesn't split three ways. So the bellboy keeps $2 and gives you guys $3. So now how much did each person pay? <laughs> you got me. Well, you take the three divided by 30 is 27. But then the bellhop kept two. Where'd that extra dollar go? I don't know. Neither do I. That's what I've been trying to figure out all morning. <laughs> you got me. But I can sure as hell ca calculate two and a half percent of just about anything. <laughs> I bet you can. <laughs> or I, when I was on the East Coast, it was 3%. Uh, times have changed. <laughs> All right, well, let's get this, we'll start to roll into this here. Put off some extra stuff on my computer, so it's got more.
All right. Can every, by the way, how's my sound? Can, every, can everybody hear me okay? Can everybody hear the, the blender in the other room with my wife's going? <laughs> can, you, can you guys hear that? No, I guess you're not. Um, all right. Let's see. Let me take it off sharing for a little bit so we can all kind of get to know each other here. Well, welcome to Ignite and to Spark session one. Do I have the right PowerPoint loaded up? I do, look at that, all right. Uh, welcome to Ignite Spark session one, Fuel Your Career. So, hey everybody, I am Ed Morrill. I am the productivity coach at our office. Um, why don't, we're not gonna do this every time, but why don't we go around really quickly and everybody say, you're, introduce yourself, how long you've been in real estate and Oh, I don't know. What is your favorite color? Maury, how about you? I am Maury Leitner. I've been in real estate since March of last year at Keller Williams. My favorite color is red. So I realize I have nothing red in my closet, but it is my favorite color. And I'm happy to be here. I did this last year and I'm excited to do 2.0. Awesome. Eric. I'm Eric Bailey. I've been in real estate for just over a year, and my favorite color is neon green. I love it. And is it, is it Bea? Did I say it right? Yeah, yeah, it's Bea. So it's Bea Guerra, um, and I just became licensed, but I started with Laura Anderson last year in March as her assistant. Um, and my favorite color is blue. I love it. Duran, how about you? My name is Duran Lewis. Uh, I've been with Keller Williams Larchmont for about a year and a half. Uh, this is my second and a half time doing Ignite. And my favorite color, I don't know, it depends on the day. Uh, what right, is now, day? Right, right now it will be creamsicle because Tampa Bay is going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, I like it. Uh, uh, Hayden, how about you? Hi, my name is Hayden Adler. I've been a real estate agent for about three months now uh, with Keller Williams Larchmont, and my favorite color is blue and my first time doing Ignite. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Patty, I see your name, I don't know, can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you. Sorry about the picture, but I had a morning, so you'll see me tomorrow. <laughs> all good, all good. Uh, Patty Pelton, favorite color red. I've been with uh, Keller Williams Largemont for about six months. Welcome, welcome. And well, actually yeah. a few months because uh, I got my license in July. So it's been a few months actually. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Lance, how about you? Uh, I'm sorry, I did not hear the question. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just having everybody introduce themselves. Just say your name, how long you've been in real estate and what's your favorite color? or any other random fact about you. Okay, uh, my favorite color is green. I like uh, the, the light that you see on the uh, stoplights. I'm not the stoplights, but the uh, traffic lights green. So it's my specific favorite green. And I've been with Keller Williams Larchmont since uh, July. Cool, cool. Um, all right, well, welcome everybody. And we'll probably have some more people drifting in. Um, all right, first things first, let me show you guys a couple things. Uh, Share this screen. All right. Let's go to kwconnect.com. And so you guys can see this right on your screen, kwconnect.com. Uh, it'll have you log in. And once you log in, you'll want to go to the top where it says resources and go to kwu. And then there, every class that KW offers is all, almost every class, with very few exceptions, every class, all the material is available in Keller Williams University section of the website. But in particular, we are obviously going to Ignite 2.0. We're gonna be doing Ignite 2.0 Lab, not Ignite, Ignite 2.0 Lab. So don't click on Ignite, use Ignite 2.0 Lab. And when you open up there, uh, if you go to Participant Resources, here you can download all the uh, workbooks for the classes. I recommend printing them out. I mean, each one is like 20 pages long. So, uh, but I still recommend doing it for you guys. Um, that way when you're done, you'll have like a, a 
cool little uh, book of everything that was Ignite. Uh, if you have an iPad and perhaps an Apple Pencil like this or something of the sort, you can also do it all electronically as well. Um, either way though, but I do recommend printing it out because there's going to be some exercises we, we do. Uh, and if you don't have it printed out today, just make sure you have some paper handy and a pen handy because you'll want to take notes. And there's also some exercises that we'll be doing as well. But note also, so all the, all the modules all have uh, the area where you can download it. But also note that at the top here, it says Ignite Toolkit. And that is a downloadable uh, uh, bunch of resources that will be uh, helpful to you throughout uh, as you go. Okay, but today we're doing Spark. And, and so Spark is the first 10 classes and Elementals is the second 10. It's meant to be done uh, you know, five, every day, Monday through Friday. But since we have our team meeting on Wednesdays at 11, we go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So it takes us an extra week. And Spark is the first two and a half weeks of so the first 10 modules. And Spark is designed to try to get you an appointment with a buyer or seller by the end of two weeks. Um, harder to do it in Los Angeles, but still possible. And one thing I'll tell you right off the bat is do not be intimidated by uh, listings or working with a buyer. You guys get, you're all well equipped and some of you guys are, are coaching with me. If you guys need my help at any point, you can uh, you know, get a hold of me and I'll help you walk through it. But any one of you guys is capable of handling a listing. If somebody calls you tomorrow and says, hey, I want to sell my house. Can you list it for me? Any one of you guys could do it. I promise you. Um, not that it's as our clients think it's super easy, but not, not it's as easy as our clients think. But nevertheless, it's not nearly as hard as many agents tend to think. Okay, so I wanted to point that out to you. Okay, let me stop sharing here. And we're going to hop right into the class itself. All right. So if everything has gone well, you guys are seeing the first page of the PowerPoint there. Nope, I see a dark screen. Hmm. Anybody else seeing your, your big Y on the screen there? No, I think your thing is freezing up like it did the other day. All right, hold on a second. Let's try this one more time. Anything now? No, it says it's a dark screen and it says Ed Merrill has started uh, screen sharing, but oh, it's just man. black. Hmm. All right, we'll try this one more time. And if not, we're just gonna wing it. Oh, you did it. I work? Your big Y. All right. All right, Ignite is, all right, we talked about that. Da, 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 we talked about that. All right, so we're gonna work on the, the goal of the first two weeks, as I mentioned, is to try to get you an appointment within the first, uh, first couple of weeks. And then the second part of the course is designed to get you a contract within 30 days. And so that's what we're going to be. That's our goal. And we're going to be working on this goal every day by building our database, practicing scripts, contacting prospective clients and getting to know the market. So in two weeks, you will have established the core activities and habits that you're going to use the entire rest of your real estate career. Uh, and you're going to follow up with returning. Uh, da, da. All right. So here's the question for you guys. So why did you guys want to become a real estate agent? Why don't we go around? Let's, let's take a minute. What were your hopes and, go, hopes and goals for doing that? Anybody want to chime in with this? And by the way, the, this is a Zoom class. It's much easier when we teach this class at, you know, in the training room. So please, please help me out by, uh, if, if at all possible, try to have your, your video on at all times and be engaged in the class, right? So if you, if you need to be typing away, trading an email, please duck out, cancel it, watch the recording. It's very distracting. So uh, otherwise I'll have to do it. So please, you know, try to stay in the class, leave your video on, be part of it all. Uh, sometimes we can't help it. Like I know Patty's in a situation right now where she can't do video, but if you can, like try to, try to be in the class, not just uh, class adjacent. Um, okay, so why why real estate? Many other so ways. For me, it so for me it was uh, freedom because I had always been in the corporate world. I wanted to have my own business. Um, I sort of, if this makes sense, wanted. Hey, be in the class, Mister. Turn that phone off. That's right. I'm turning. I'm turning off the ringer right now as we speak. Me too. 
Um, oh, it's a coaching client. I'm like, uh, you should be in the class. Uh, what, the heck, what the heck are you doing calling? Uh, make money that as hard as I work, you, you know, I didn't want to just be a salaried employee anymore. And um, I wanted my business and my life to be integrated. Really something that I could enjoy. Not yeah. go to work and go home and that's it. I love that. Anybody else? And did I you? mention make a lot of money? <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. And, and by the way, you're well on your way to doing so. Yes. What else we got? Other reasons? Uh, to be able to kind of have, you know, set your own time schedule. Obviously, you know, we need to work and, and do a lot of things. But uh, at the end of the day, if I need a doctor's appointment, I don't have to get an approval, you know, from my boss or, you know, if I want to take time off, I can take time off whenever I want. And so the freedom, uh, like Mari said, it's important to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is totally true. I mean, there's an old joke that we were saying when you guys first, before some of you guys logged on, we were saying, you know, why do we join for real estate for the freedom, the freedom and the schedule, the freedom to choose which 70 hours of the week you want to work. Right. So, um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, there, there's, it's, it's totally true. And by the way, as much as I kid around about that, like the truth is, is you really don't need to work more than 40 hours a week, even if you want to crush it. In fact, even if you want to crush it and your goal is to do a million dollars of GCI within the next five years and, and get to that point where you're doing it regularly, I would still say you probably don't need to be working more than 40 hours a week. It's entirely possible. Um, you, can, there, you can do work that way, and many people do. You can work 70 hours a week, but totally not, not required for sure. Um, what else? Other reasons for joining? And, th and thanks, Lance, for that. For that, I really appreciate it. Any anybody else want to chime in? Well, I think for me, like I got into real estate because I came from the corporate world with like renting out office space with IWG, mm -hmm. and coming from sales is always a cap with sales. So my my whole thing going to real estate was like I like the fact that each year you're always competing against yourself and there is no cap. So like, I, I kind of, that's, I like that freedom. Well said, well said, uh, Bea, absolutely. Um, yeah, well, absolutely, well said. And yeah, there is no cap to your income. You can't, and, and you can make over a million dollars a year net. It is entirely possible. I know people who have done it and uh, w without looking too hard, you can find a couple people who have done it as well. So uh, well said. Anybody else wanna chime in with anything else? Um, I, it's Patty. I, I think Patty. it's also something that you can continue to do for as old as you are, as yeah. young as you are. It's something that you can continue doing. And, and uh, uh, so I think that's a lot of it, just looking uh, future forward on that. That's, that's, that's a really great point, Patty. It's funny because I, I don't hear that very often. And yet that is, that is entirely true. You will find that uh, people who have some years and some experience under their mileage actually have an advantage. So uh, it, it is, uh, you know, you can definitely work into your 60s and 70s and still crush it in this business and, and do every bit as well. So that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Uh, anybody else, any, anything else that we didn't cover? I love all this. You, you guys yeah. have some great insights. Um, go ahead, Hayden. Um, I just say like, I've a, always had a passion for real estate, just seeing homes and buildings that are different architectures and styles and just learning about it. I find it fascinating, just history and economics. So that's something I've always been interested in. And this career gives you a chance to have the freedom to do so many different things in a day. And mm -hmm. you never know what's gonna come at you. So I really wanted that for a career and to be able to integrate it into my life, like so many of you guys have said, is really something you can't really do in any other career. So I find it really exciting. That. Well said, well said. Um, very cool. I, and I can tell you, you know, I've been doing this for almost coming up on shit, coming up on 12 years now. Wow. Um, and I love, I love this career path. It is insane. Like it is crazy some days, like the weirdest things you ever could possibly imagine happen to you sometimes. Uh, it's just, uh, and yet it's wonderful. I mean, you know, there's times when I've had clients just bawling, crying, calling me just so happy that they can't believe that this finally actually happened. And like you become like a part of their family. Like it's really, really cool if you allow it. And um, uh, it's also heartbreaking at times, you know, we've all had deals fall out that were, that we didn't see coming and that happens. And that's, it doesn't get easier. It, uh, in fact, it gets harder because 
the, the longer you've been around, the more you feel like, God damn it, like, how could they possibly not have chosen me with all my experience and everything, you know? I almost feel like taking rejection was easier in my first year. Um, but at the same time, like, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. And it's a, it's a lot of fun. And uh, anyways, we'll, we'll leave it there. All right. Um, all right, so uh, we're re I'm reading along here. Uh, take a moment to envision your ideal life. All right, so let's, let's take a moment and uh, what are you doing for the people you care about? All right, so let's picture this, right? Let me, they're not, they're not doing a very good job painting the picture here. So let me, let me, let me paint it for you. Like I would like, like we're at a listing appointment and I'm, I'm painting for a seller what it's gonna be like to sell their home for, you know, top dollar. Um, but yeah, let's picture, we get to the end. It is January of 2021, right? Let's say we get to the end of 2021. It's December 31st. We're wrapping up the year and you have just absolutely crushed 2021 in real estate. You just absolutely crushed it. So what are you doing for the people you care about? So you won, you just made a bunch of money, and blah, blah, blah. What do you do for the people you care about? Maybe are there some charities that you support? How would you make the lives of yourself and everyone around you better? So what we're doing here is it's important to establish your mindset and your goals from the beginning. Even jobs you love have moments when you'll struggle to find motivation. During Ignite, you'll learn a lot about the ins and outs of how to, of how to find and keep business. You'll learn everything you, need to, to do to, everything you need to do to make a deal. The more connected you are with what you want to do with your success, the more you'll find that success. Right? This job is really hard, so we need to keep in touch with why we're, why we're trying to get forward. Has anybody here ever heard of a limiting belief? Does that ring a bell? Anyone want to take a crack at defining it? Maury, you want to do that? Yeah. Take a shot at it. Oh, what, what, is, uh, what is a limiting belief? Um, you know, it's pretty much what it says. Any belief that you have that, that sets a limit on yourself. You know, if you think, well, yeah, I'll do okay in real estate, but I can't make half a million dollars. Those are the big guys or, or you, you know, um, those are the guys on TV, you know, selling sunset. That's not me. Well, then you're not going to make half a million dollars because you're limiting yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly right. So, so the uh, definition here is limiting beliefs are ways of thinking that hold you back from success. As participants, as you guys go through Ignite, you might catch yourselves thinking things like, I don't have time to devote three hours a day to lead generation. And well, Henry Ford has a famous quote. If you think you can do a thing or you think you can't do a thing, you're right. What Henry Ford knew that was that your mindset is one of the factors that determines your success. So as you go through Ignite, look for ways that you're limiting your own success and remove the barriers you're putting in your own way. Connect to your goals, your big why, as Gary Keller says, to push through and achieve your goals. All right, so let me go back to this. So please tell me you guys are seeing this. Can you guys see this? Yep. All right, so what successful agents do every day? So as we, we're gonna be going through this over the next month. Uh, and by the way, different teachers are gonna be teaching it. And so hopefully you'll, you'll pick up different things from different people. Um, so here's the secret to being a successful real estate agent. agent. There is no secret at all. Success leaves clues. So we know exactly what successful agents do every day. Every day, agents do two types of thing, two types of activities. They grow their business and they run their business. These are the activities that will help you achieve your big why. Every time you do any of them, know that you're doing it to achieve the life you want, right? And we're going to do more of that goal setting, goal setting and thinking about our big why, those kind of exercises. Um, okay, so what do we got here? So for growing your business, this is like lead generating for buyers and sellers. By the way, that right there is probably something you're, you should, especially if you guys are new, you should be doing that about three hours a day, if not more. I mean, really in the first, in your first six months, until you have appointments, like what else are you going to be doing? So I would be doing this four five, six hours a day is not too much. Lead generate for buyers and sellers. And you're probably wondering, well, what the hell does that mean? We're going to talk all about that for the next month. Uh, you're going to be making seller listing presentations and get listings. You're going to be doing buyer presentations or buyer consultations, as I like to call them, and uh, we call them around LA. 
and you're going to be getting buyer listings, right? Buyers who have signed a BRE with you. Uh, you're also going to be previewing lots of real estate. You're getting to know the market. That's growing your business, running your business. What are the, what are those kind of things? We're talking about marketing your seller listings, right? So doing photos and doing all that stuff to take care of our listings. When you have buyers, you're going to be showing them homes and, and uh, showing them, uh, showing them homes and showing them condos, all that kind of stuff. You're going to be negotiating contracts. You're going to be doing transaction management to closing, right? TC work, we call it transaction coordinating, uh, vendor management, right? So you got to, uh, keep on top of your vendors that you're referring to all that kind of stuff. Uh, setting goals. That's part of running your business, setting goals. doesn't seem like it, but that's actually part of your business. Uh, compliance and risk management. Um, yeah, right. We got to make sure we stay out of trouble. So there's some stuff we do as far as that goes. Attend training and getting coaching. That's what you guys are doing right now. This is training. Um, sometimes I am, it's funny because yes, I think Ignite is a wonderful class for new agents. Of course I do. I also think it's a wonderful class for, I, I think Ignite would be a wonderful thing to be doing once a year as an experienced agent. I love teaching Ignite because part of why is because I love it forces me to go through the material again. And I'm always surprised how much I, I've taught this particular module probably five times in the last couple of years. And I'll, I'll probably still pick up on a thing or two from today. Um, so yeah. Uh, and that's part of the, the, the mindset we like to have is as business owners, we should always be growing, always be learning, right? Uh, a train, a team training and getting coaching. So, and then the last portion here is managing money. Uh, it's part of the funner parts, but yeah, managing it all, right? Uh, Maury and I were just talking about that at the beginning, uh, but yeah, that's part of what, of it all. Okay. Next slide is. All right, so typically, if we were in the office, we might be doing this class at 11 o'clock. And how this would work is we would start in the morning. We might lead generate together and, and, and do all that kind of stuff. Um, we might practice a little bit of scripts and role play, and then we would lead generate together in a group, like in the same room. We would be all picking up our phones and calling our clients. And does that mean other people could hear everybody else's conversations? Yes, and that's wonderful because you get to hear other people and what they're saying. And it inspires you and you're like, oh my God, that's kind of cool. I, I could use that script. I could say something like that. And you just, even if you're not consciously paying attention to it and you're picking up on stuff. So um, uh, th that's a good thing to be doing. Um, we don't do any of that right now because of COVID, but hopefully that'll be back before too long. All right. Let's, let's talk to Gary Keller here. Oh, hold on. Whoa, 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 hold on. Were you guys getting any volume out of that? Hold on a second here. No, didn't hear anything. All right, hold on. Mm -hmm. There we go. Let's, try, let's see if this works. Hi, I'm Gary Keller. This course will allow you to get off to a fast start you can build on. Because if you repeated the principles every 90 days for a year, believe me, you have an awesome first year. And just as important, you would have built the foundation and momentum for your entire career. It is practical, realistic, and easy to apply. It's about the fundamentals that determine your level of success in the business of real estate. From our research with top agents, we have found that they too started their careers with these fundamentals, and they continue to do them along with their teams to this very day. And it's not hard. It just requires a little focused effort a few hours every day. Now there is really just one way to achieve the goal. It's lead generation. Now, other skills are important, yet without leads to work with, your skills won't mean a thing. Dealing with business never takes precedence over what? Finding business. Never. Research shows that top producing agents make lead generation their number one priority and the one thing they make sure they always get done. You can do this. And when you do, you will get the leads, the relationships, the experiences, the career, and the income that you want and deserve. Go get them and good luck.
All right, so that there, that was Gary Keller, the CEO. Hi, I'm- Oh, hold on. Um, Nothing else about your business will have as big an impact on it as the number of leads you have. Absolutely. All right. So what is it? What does that quote mean to you guys? Anybody want to chime in? It's not particularly too deep. Yeah, the more leads you have, the more business you have. There was, there was one thing that was tucked in the middle of that video that he said, uh, serving, servicing your current business should never be more important than finding new business, right? And that is a concept that uh, you would be surprised how many experienced agents uh, don't have that one nailed, in, nailed down even years into the business. As crazy as it sounds, finding the next deal is more important than servicing the deal that you have right now. Uh, but we'll get into that some other time. Uh, all right, let's move forward here. So Ignite is four weeks where you will learn the foundations for success, including your daily success habits. Your daily success habits are things successful agents do every day, including lead generation. The first two weeks are called Spark. Spark is your incubator for success, where you will learn how to set a successful mindset, lead generate, and get the confidence of a seller or buyer in your first appointment. After learning these foundations and developing some successful client relationships in Spark, you'll move on to elementals to learn the skills you need to take those appointments to a successful closing. So according to NAR, National Association of Realtors, 66% of sellers and 41% of buyers find an agent through a friend. Do you get that? 66% of sellers and 41% of buyers find their agent through a friend. Why am I telling you that? You got to work on your sphere of influence. Them. Yeah, all the people it's, we know. Especially in your first year, where are your, your first closings, your first handful of closings, where are those far most likely of coming from? From your sphere of people that you know. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so here's a, here's a really fun, cool little exercise. Everybody take out your cell phone and go to your contacts. Everybody open up contacts. Right, everybody got their list of contacts there? Now I want you guys to scroll all the way down to the bottom. All the way down to the very, very bottom, especially if you have an iPhone, I'm not sure about all you uh, Chrome and whatever Pixel or whatever other phones are out there these days. Um, all the way down there at the bottom, there's a number of contacts. All right, so remember I told you you're gonna need some paper and pen? All right, so I want you to write down that total number of contacts and I want you to multiply it by 6%. Everybody got that? Total number of contacts in your phone multiplied by 6%. This number gives you the average number of, quote, real estate actions that will be happening in the next 12 months within your sphere of influence. That is how many deals are likely to happen amongst all those people in your phone. Anyone want to take a guess what the average commission in our marketplace is in our market center at KW Larchmont? 20,000. It is about 28,000, 28 to 30,000. Let's say 30,000. It's about $30,000, so pretty good guess there, Hayden. It's about 1.1 yeah, million. Gabrielle got it in the chat. It's about- You got 30. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's uh, our average price point is about 1.1 million, about two and a half percent, it's about 30,000. So I want you to take that number that we multiplied, right? Take the number of contacts in your database, you multiply it by 6% and multiply that by 30, 30,000, I should say, 30,000.
So in mine, I've got 2.8 million. That's how, that's how much that's how much money my database is worth right now. Yeah, I have 2.2. 2.2. What are the numbers we got out there? Five hundred and fifty thousand. Seven hundred twenty. Seven hundred twenty thousand. Awesome. So my, uh, the point is, is that no matter what these numbers are, I think any one of us would be happy with with these numbers, right? And yeah, more. I see, sorry. I, I just now I'm opening up chat. Uh, any one of us would be happy with any one of these numbers, right? Look at Gabby. Four 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 point five million. You got a lot of contacts in your phone. That's wonderful. Um, right. Now I know, so, which brings me to LA. Why LA, Los Angeles, why am I talking LA? Because as we go through Ignite, our market is a little different than other markets around the country. It's not a lot different. And I know it, it seems like it's crazy different. The numbers are generally about twice as, like our price point is usually about twice as high as, on average as other parts in the country, sometimes more. But, and, and that typically means that there's a lot more agents in LA because you can survive in LA with a whole lot less deals. So there's a lot more per capita agents in LA than there are other places. But in the end, I promise you, it is not nearly as different as you think. People get so hung up on this. And sometimes I hear that all the time of like, oh, well, sure. If I lived in, in Kansas, I would be doing great as a realtor. No, actually, trust me, I've worked in a smaller market. I've worked in a mid market and I've worked in LA and a good listing presentation in Charleston, South Carolina is a good listing presentation in LA. And honestly, it's not, it's, it's pretty comparable. You, you tend to do a lot more deals there. And so it, it changes a little, it changes some of the things about how you work, but it's not as different as you guys might think at all. Anyways, so once we have that number, that's how much our, our database is worth. That's how much, that's how much money is probably going to come out of your database over the next year. And even if you can get a quarter of that number, you're still looking pretty damn good, right? So we're gonna learn all about that. So when we start building our database, let me see where the heck are we here? Where's my PowerPoint? Scroll that, oh, we're past that. Wait, no, we're not. there we go. When we start building our database, it makes sense to start with our sphere of influence. In this section, we will define our sphere and practice reconnecting with people in our sphere. How are we doing on time? The, the first day we always take two days to teach it because it, it's never enough because we have to set up some stuff that uh, that takes longer. Okay, so we're, uh, we still got a, uh, about 15, 20 minutes left. Okay, so so what is our sphere of influence? Anybody want to take a crack at Who is that? Uh, friends, family, uh, co-workers, anyone uh, you meet. Yeah. Ooh, drivers. <laughs> your, your sphere of influence are the people you have already met. You already know these people. Uh, if you call them up on the phone, you might have to explain to them for a second who you are, but they would know who you are, right? Uh, they already know, trust, and respect you generally. Um, therefore, they are likely to be willing to help you. Because after all, people like to do business with people they know, trust, and respect. You have established reciprocal communication with the people in your sphere. So the contacts in your phone, this is as good a place as any to start looking for the people in your sphere. Uh, would you prefer to do business with people you know, trust, and respect? Do you think your friends and acquaintances would rather use a realtor they know and trust? Yeah, of course, right? So uh, who do you know that is, so here's, okay, moving on. Who do you know that is going through a life change? Go, you know, as you go through, scroll through your, your, your uh, contacts, be thinking about who's going through a life change, right? Uh, is it possible they could use your help as a realtor? People getting, people having a baby. Oftentimes, that's that's a transaction. That's a side right there. People getting a divorce. That's three sides right there. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, uh, right? You think about it. A couple splits. That's one sale, two purchases. You handle the whole thing. Yes, that's that's a three for right there. Um, I'm kidding. Like we're not encouraging that, but yeah, it's, it's true. Um, you know, but seriously, like uh, people uh, growing family, making more money. Oftentimes, they want to move up in size. People downsizing. That's, that happens too. Hey, and, and what, you know, in all honesty, COVID hits. Certain people are, are in serious financial trouble. Some of those people need an agent too. And I'm not saying this in a cold, 
meaning, I'm not saying this to be cold and callous. I'm saying this. There are some people who the best thing they could possibly do right now is sell their house while the go, while the getting is really good, take that money, downsize, find a little apartment and hunker down and figure it all out. There, I promise you, there are people in LA in that scenario. And that is the best thing that could possibly happen to them right now. And you might be the person to help walk them through it. And I'm not kidding when I say this, uh, working with distressed properties, people who are in a bind, um, it is some of the most rewarding thing you can do as a realtor. Some of the time when we really get to do stuff that's really altruistic. And there will be times along in the transaction where you can help them out and really give them some extra love and attention and, and help them walk through a very, very stressful thing, right? So that's true whether some, you know, there's many reasons why someone could be in a financial pickle, but sometimes the best thing for them to do is to, is to sell their property, right? It's unfortunate, but better that you help them and help them do that in a really equitable way. And knowing you guys, you know, probably take a cut on the commission or whatever and help them out a little bit here and there, whatever you can do to help them find the, the best way of getting out of that scenario. All right. One of the best things about this is that it costs nothing to call people you already know. Since you already know them, it requires fewer touches and less effort to get them to want to help you by giving you their business or referring friends and family. People you haven't already met are going to take a lot more time and effort and oftentimes money to convince than those you already know, right? Some of you guys already have experienced this. You get, get people from Op City, you get people from internet leads from the office and stuff like that. There's st stuff that we're doing. Or from a if you're on a team, maybe they're passing leads to you too. A lot harder to get a Zillow client to, to try to do business with you than it is like someone who's like a good friend from high school who happens to live nearby and who's looking for a house, right? Uh, your sphere of influence is more than just friends and family. All right. In your participant guide, if you're there, wait, we're not there. That's, that's the way it is. Um, is this what you guys are seeing on page seven of your participant guide? I don't know. Does anybody even have the participant guide? I don't have it. All right. No worries. Um, anyways. No, that's not it, Ed. Okay. It says on page seven, start with your sphere, defining your sphere. Did you pass that? Yeah, hey, more read me what's on that page there. Uh, I don't have it. That, um, it says that, defining your sphere, and it's got family, friends, parents. It's got like um, six different um, sort of contacts: people in your community, contacts you have generated, anyone uh, who you have done business with. And it says, what do you know that is going? Who do you know that's going through a life event? We just talked about that. Um, who does not yet know you are a real estate agent? And who have you not spoken to in the last two weeks? Then the next page is start with your sphere. Yeah. So yeah, uh, thanks Hayden for, for pointing out where to find that. Yeah, so a great exercise to be doing right now early in your career, like, like literally right at the beginning of your career, is to go through your phone, not just your phone, but think about everyone you know from every aspect of your life in LA, in the LA area. And by the way, include people outside of LA too. And just start writing down everybody you know, right? And then start thinking about how can you possibly approach, you know, how, how can I how can I reconnect with these people and get them back in my life? So, by the way, one thing wonderful about social media is it makes it so easy to reconnect with people. You just start posting like, hey, everybody, I'm so excited. I got my real estate license. And just start posting stuff about real estate, you know, once a day. I would do that every day for the next month. Just post something about real estate. And you'd be amazed how many people like will start to, start falling interesting and all that stuff. And, you know, of course you're gonna have some skeptics at first, like, oh God, not another realtor in the family or not another realtor friend of mine. But over time, like you'll win them over, right? I also used COVID as the excuse. And I found just for myself, I, I found it more comfortable. People in my database that I haven't spoken to in years, I mean like 15 years, rather than like, hey, I'm in real estate now. How can I help you? I need to sell you something. It was, hey, it's Maury. It's a blast from the past. Didn't you used to work at such and such? I think we did business. It's got to be, you know, like over a decade. But what happened is because of COVID, I started reaching out to people and seeing, you know, making sure they're okay. And the response was so positive. I just decided I'm going to reach out to everyone in my contact list. 
So tell me, is your family okay? Nobody got negatively affected? That's great. What are you up to now? What are you doing? And the, the conversation takes off and then you know they're gonna ask you what you're doing now. And I'll, I'll tell you, you mentioned it earlier um, and it's not to sound boastful, it's just to help everybody else. Um, I did that with one person that I haven't seen in, in quite a long time. And she followed up and said, hey, Maury, I've got a friend. She's a first time home buyer. She's looking for a condo or a house. Can I give her your number? We closed on December 18th of last year. I put her in a condo. So I'm, I'm just sharing what worked for me. I love, no, absolutely. And by the way, uh, for those of you guys who don't know Maury, Maury uh, started in real estate, what, about, about a year ago now, right? About 10 one, months ago. 10 months ago. 10, mo 10 months ago, that's right. You started right before COVID. March. I start, I always, I say that to people when they say, what are you doing? I say, I got my real estate license just in time for COVID. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he's, he's like an example of like a, uh, having a really strong first year. I mean, and, and he did it, you know, much of what he's done is just all the things we're talking about. Now, I, I remember, I remember back, Maury, back in April last year when we were doing the MRA together, which we started at the office before we moved over to doing it on, on Zoom. Yeah. And I remember you, I remember you said something really that I thought was so poignant at the time was that, man, I feel like someone gave me an instruction manual of like how to, how to crush it in my first few years of real estate or something, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, that is such, you know, what a great way of putting it. That is absolutely right. So. I also uh, just thought the other morning, just quickly, because yeah. I don't think anybody likes to lead generate. I mean, nobody wants to pick up the phone. It's cold calling. Nobody wants to do it. And I realized it's like flossing your teeth. Like, come on, I brush my teeth. I really don't want to floss. I'm tired. I just want to go to bed. But then you floss your teeth and you realize, holy shit, you know, I brushed my teeth. I thought my mouth was clean and all this food's coming out. And then you go to the dentist and he's like, wow, you have a really good checkup. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. So you floss. It, it's to me, lead generation is like flossing my teeth. You just have to do it and it pays off. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and by the way, that's also... On that note, that's why a lot of people lead generate in the morning because it's generally the hardest part of your day. And if yep. you lead generate a couple hours in the morning, the rest of your day is just like, you just cruise through it. You just show up where you're supposed to show up and answer the phone when people call you. You don't, you don't put yourself out there at all. It's just those, those, you know, those hours of, of lead generating. Uh, anyways, I love that morning. Well, well said. Um, so yes, yeah, so that, that exercise there in the book is all about that, all about locating and finding uh, uh, people in your, you know, how, how to, how to find all the people, you know, and then starting to put all those people in your database and all that kind of good stuff. All right. So here, this, this little, this little graph here is showing you, uh, these points at the top, these are when people bought, bought or sold their ho home, right? The likelihood of a move, move over time. And everyone typically moves about every 10 years, sometimes more frequently, sometimes less, but about 10 years. And uh, really, uh, when everyone thinks of lead generating, they think, oh, I need to start calling people. Where's my little annotation thing? I need to start calling people right, right before, the, if this is when people are gonna buy and sell, this is when I wanna, I wanna start contacting them right here, right? And I'll tell you, this is when every realtor starts contacting them because this is when they start showing signs of, buying or selling, it is much easier, especially as a newer agent, to try to contact people all the way through all of it, not just right here, right before they're going to buy or sell, but even here when they're least likely of buying a home. Just start just contacting them all through this so that by the time they start getting here, you have an established relationship. They know and trust you and are coming to you already for all their real estate questions, right? And then that way you're you're ready to go to, to service them when they when they're ready to buy or sell. I didn't mean to go forward just yet. Um, it's also this is like how would you feel if your friends only called you if they wanted something from you, right? Would you feel like they cared about you? No, right? Um, do you trust people that you think care about you more with your money? Do you want to talk to them and do business with them? Yeah, absolutely. 
So you want to stay top of mind as the realtor of choice consistently all throughout the sales cycle, all throughout, all throughout when they're buying and selling. Uh, so that when they're ready to buy, you're the first call. If you don't talk to them for eight years after a deal, why would they call you first when they're ready to move? Right. And so all those people that we that become past clients for all of you guys are starting to close some deals. You want to stay in touch with those people. They're, they're your best source of referrals, your past clients, because they know they've done business with you. They know what the experience is like. Um, all right. By the way, how many of you guys would say aren't the best at small talk? By the way, this totally describes me, or at least it used to. Um, how many would you say like you're not the best small talker on the planet, right? You're you're not you're you're not the most smooth like you know think of everything on your feet and whatever drop him into a crowd and he'll like you know whatever. Um, that's totally me. I'm I'm not like that. This little nugget here changed my life, and hopefully it'll do the same for you. Ford. Ford stands for family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, just like you see here on your screen. Uh, so what this does is uh, this keeps it personal and shows interest in their lives. You use the Ford method to ask about their family, occupation, recreation, dreams. It's just a little mnemonic device. It's a good reminder of easy, safe topics that you can bring up with just about anybody uh, and, and find all you, anytime you're in any scenario and any, at any time, just start asking them about their family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. You find it like I go to, my kid plays baseball. So I'm at a lot of baseball games, a lot of parents in the stands. And next, you know, I'm sitting next to somebody. I'm like, Hey, which kid's yours? Oh, that one. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I know. Oh yeah. Great first baseman. Yeah. So, uh, is he your only one or you have other kids? Right. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, great. So, uh, anyways, uh, blah, blah, blah. I start talking. Which one? My kid? Oh, yeah, that's my kid over there. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so whatever. Small talk, small talk. When it starts to die out. So what do you do for work? Oh, I'm, I'm in whatever. I'm in, I'm a uh, rocket scientist here at Lockheed Martin. Oh, really? Oh, that's so cool. Oh, it's, uh, uh, talk about that for a while. At some point, they'll probably ask you, what do you do for work? Oh, I'm, I'm in real estate. And then, you know, they might ask more. They might ask less. I don't know. If I feel like it, I might push it a little bit. Probably not. Then I just ask about recreation or actually recreation being what, you know, so your kid plays baseball. Did you play baseball growing up? What else do you do? Do you, uh, do you still play baseball at all? I, I said, probably not. Right. What, what do you do nowadays for fun? Oh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you know, do you guys see that movie on Netflix or whatever? Blah, blah, blah. Right. Recreation, fun stuff. Dreams. Dreams is interesting. Dreams is not like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or what did you ever dreamt of being when, when you got older? It's, it's just anything future based, anything in the future. Right. So, Hey, with, with your vaccine coming out, do you guys have any plans on what do you want to do this fall if we're back to normal and able to travel? Where do you guys want to go? That's a, that's, that's a great one right now. Like, what are you going to, where, where are you going to go when you get your vaccine? Right? Love that. All right. Does that make sense, everybody? So here, so we're going to do this again tomorrow, right? We're going to continue with session one tomorrow, but here... For homework for tonight, uh, here's what I'd love to see you guys do. So find on KW Connect. So write this down. Find on KW Connect where, where that Keller Williams University and Ignite 2.0. So see if you can download and print out the, the module one, right? So we're in uh, Spark session one. See if you can print that out. If you have an iPad, you can just put it on your iPad. And then... The other thing is try to practice for it. If you, if you can, not easy right now because we're all locked down because we live in LA, but if it's possible, tr try, try using some Ford on, on people out there, right? And if not, whatever, just get a family or friend on the phone and just, you know, practice with one of them, right? But it's such a great thing. It's, a, it's such a great tool uh, using Ford as a little technique to, to start conversation with just about anybody. Sound good? Okay, we're gonna wrap it up there for the day. We'll continue here with part two of session one tomorrow. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel. I, actually, I think, uh, just follow whatever link John sends you because uh, um, it's not on the same Ignite link, which it used to be. Um, but yeah, just follow whatever whatever it, it, link John sends you. Um, but before we wrap up, any ahas from the day?
that ribbon. Yeah, I got to mine my database. I want that 2.2 million. <laughs> I love it. I love it. My aha hey, but- was uh, Maury's analogy about the floss. <laughs> right? When I, when I thought of that, I thought, oh, yeah, right. Floss. I got to clean my teeth. You know, I'll just keep calling, <laughs> making it's calls. It's genius. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's the necessary evil, but you've got to do it. I love it. Anybody else? Aha's, lessons learned, things that made you go, hmm? Yeah, I like the, uh, the thought of reaching out to people about COVID and just kind of touching base with them, seeing how they're doing, just kind of, you know, keeping it light. I love it. And I wasn't going to do this, but you know what, Lance, you inspire me. One other thing, one other way of using this is what's called a Ford sandwich, where, so how it works is like, so you're calling up, say, say, say Lance, you'd be somebody I haven't spoken with since you know five years ago. We used to work together at whatever, I don't know, at a car dealership, right? You and I used to work together at a car dealership. So I'm calling you up. Hey, Lance, what's going on? It's a ring, ring, ring. You answer. Hello? Hey, Lance. Hey, what's going on, man? It's Ed Morrill from uh, back when we used to work over at, uh, I don't know, the BMW dealership over there in Beverly Hills. How's it going? Oh, hey, Ed. How's it going? Yeah, uh, it's going well over here. How you doing? Cool, man. Yeah, I was just giving you a call. I was just uh, going through my phone, just kind of catching up with people. Uh, I know things have been kind of crazy with COVID and whatnot. So I was just calling to just kind of, you know, just reach out to everybody and see how everybody's doing. Uh, how's your family doing? Is, is your, uh, you know, are you still living down there with, with your family down in, in Santa Monica? Yeah, we are. Um, we're doing fine. We actually got COVID, but uh, everyone's healthy now. So yeah, I appreciate you asking. How about you guys? Great. So you guys survived COVID and did you guys have really bad symptoms or was it not too bad? Uh, you know, it really wasn't bad at all, luckily. Right now. So, so now you got superpowers, man. You're, you're immune. You're like, you're out there rocking and rolling, right? Does, that, uh, does it does just make you feel like you're, you have nothing to worry about because now you're on the other side of it? Yeah, exactly. I don't need a vaccine. I'm, I'm good over here. <laughs> That's awesome. It's so cool, man. So what are you doing for work these days? Are you still over at, at BMW? You know what? No, I actually uh, switched to Mercedes. Yeah, I like. Oh, that's Mercedes so cool! Movie. Right on, man. Cool. Uh, I, I should give you a call. I'm actually I'm 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 in the hunt. I'm actually that's part of why I was calling you originally. Is I was uh, looking at, at Beamers, but uh, I'm also looking at Mercedes too. So I might give you a call. Uh, but yeah, man. So which which dealership are you at? I am at the dealership in Valencia now. In Valencia. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Oftentimes, Lance might be asking me about how, like, how's your business going or something, right? Um, and if not, that's totally cool too, but you can just move into it. But oftentimes you ask them about their occupation and they'll ask you about yours, right? Um, so if he does, if not, I'll, I'll just go on. Hey, man, so, so uh, me, I, as for me, I'm doing real estate these days. I, I just took this job over at Keller Williams Larchmont. And so, you know, partly I'm just going through my database and just kind of reconnecting with everybody in case you might ever need anything real estate related in case you know anybody who does, man. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the market's pretty good right now. So, uh, if you ever want to learn more about it or you have any need, just let me know. You guys are, you guys aren't by chance looking at, I mean, you guys have that great place in Santa Monica. Are you by chance looking at moving anytime soon? You know what? Me and my wife have been thinking about it, but, uh, you know, we don't really have a time frame. but yeah, we've been looking at a few different places. So, so at this point, if he says yes, now I, I would explore that with you and I would pivot and follow that for as long as I felt like you were comfortable with it. If not, totally cool. Like, this is our first time reconnecting, and it's been five years, right? So you don't want to, you don't want to push real hard. You just back off it really quick, and then move back to asking anything about Ford, right? So, so, anyways, man. Um, uh, hey, I, I remember your kid used to play baseball because you know we used to, our kids used to practice together. Is 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 Joe still doing baseball these days? You know what, Joe unfortunately passed away. Oh it was my very god! Very tragic. I, um, I am so sorry. I had no idea. I would never have asked if I knew. I am so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Oh my god, Andrew's going to be devastated. I, I, oh my god, when he finds out. Oh man, Lance. You know, obviously, I would follow that road. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would st- just stay on that. And by the way, like if someone says something like that, just forget. If that was the first part of the conversation, just forget about whatever the hell was you were going to say. And just stay on that for a bit because you're a human being and like I I care about Lance and I just want to like help him, right? And I would send him like an unbranded card afterwards because that's what people do when they care. You just send a card and don't mention anything about business. You say, hey man, I'm just, you know, 
you know, and you might want to send a gift or something like all the normal things people do. Like this is no longer business. Like, you know, this is somebody who could use a, a hand. Right. So, um, right. And so whatever you connect in that way and then drop it. And then later on, you'll, you know, maybe connect it out real estate, maybe not and whatever, just, but let it be right. So definitely when someone gives you something tragic like that, don't just don't, don't move forward, stay on that and let it go its course and, and leave it at that. Right. Anyways, question. So, and by the way, four does not have to be in that particular order. It can just as easily be D R O F um, or whatever order you want to do it in, but it's just, uh, it does kind of work nice in that order. Um, but, uh, it does not have to, uh, anyways, anything else? Last do you, um, sort of move toward the end of the conversation with, you know, if ever you're thinking about it, you know, I'd love to the opportunity to win your business. What I try to do is I, I usually say, Hey, if you don't mind with your permission, I'd love to put you on my newsletter list. I send out a newsletter like once a month. So it's not a bother. Let me make sure I have your best email and I get that down because if I've connected with them, I don't want it to end there. I, I, I want to keep a connection going. Brilliant, Maury. I love it. And I, uh, and I, I used to do that. I used to do my calls like that, but let me, let me give you a suggestion and try it out. See if you like it. Put so Ford sandwich, start with whatever Ford move into business at the end of business, ask for that permission or whatever. Like, Oh my God, this is great. Hey, uh, Lance, do you mind if, you know, I'm so glad we reconnected. Do you mind if I give you a call every few months and just kind of keep in touch and maybe I'll add you to my, my new, my email newsletter that I send out once a month. If you don't mind, you can always unsubscribe if it's, if you don't like it, would that be okay? Whatever. Get their permission to stay in touch and then wrap it up with some, you don't want to end on business. You want to end on Ford. Why is that? Why is that such a, a, an important thing? Why does that matter? Because then they feel like you're a person and not just trying to get right? from them. You're trying to just in, say, hey, just you know, make it casual. In fact, I, I love what Patty just said. Exactly right. In fact, I would be, I will tell you that the part that comes after the business part is more important than the part that comes before. Because when you stay personal, personal, personal business, they think, oh shit, why did you even bother asking me anything about personal? All you care about is you're a realtor now and you want to talk about real estate. But then when I come back to personal, they're like, oh, we, we already talked business and he still wants to talk to me. Like, whoa, wow. Apparently this person really cares about me. Because you do, right? Because we do. We, we want to stress, you know, we want to care about people and want to have these strong relationships with people. So, so I, I would encourage you to try out ending on some personal Ford typey stuff, not necessarily Ford, but personal type stuff so that it feels like to them, like you care about more than, than, than you're just trying to, if you end on business, it may oftentimes feels to them like everything else was superficial because all you really wanted to is the business. And then as soon as you got your business, you're done, right? That's great. Absolutely. Thanks. Any other, any other question? And by the way, Maury, when I changed that way of doing things, it was so like, like tangible, like in my calls, like it really made my calls stand out a lot more. Like I just, you could feel the energy shift a little bit in the calls from doing it. It was really neat. Anybody else? Anything else? All right. That was a lot of fun. You guys are off well on your way, kicking it into Ignite. Um, we will find ourselves here tomorrow again. Um, any last questions or anything at all before we wrap up? All right. Well, with, with all those with all those riveting questions, I, 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 I can't answer them all today. So we're going to have to <laughs> save them all for tomorrow, okay? Um, I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Please try to be here at 1130 promptly with with cameras on because I want to see your beautiful faces so I don't feel like I'm talking into the ether and uh, I will see you then and have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, you always know where to find me if you need me thank you Thanks, bye everybody bye guys bye